You're listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast series that syndicates for the A-List Online, and my name's Andrew Mackay-Smith. Hope you're well. The interview subject coming up for you is Yun Hiss from the extraordinary Finnish outfit, Oranzi Pazazu. Now, the reason for the chat with Yun Hiss is to talk up Mesterin Kinsey. I believe that's in his native Finn, but if it translates to English, apparently it's the master's claw. Indeed it is. It'll dig its claws into you, this album here. It is virtually uncategorizable, I must say. So here he is, Yun Hiss from Aransi Pazazu. Hey mate, how's things? Oh good, oh good. How's the uh, how's the inter- how's the interviews mate been going with the Australian media? Uh, oh good. Hey, yeah, I you... think it's uh, first interviews there. Yeah, and are you are you aware that, of the success of the album? I suppose you've done interviews before me, but you know it's charted on the number twenty four on the Aria charts here. Yeah, I, I heard about it actually yesterday. It's pretty surprising to, to me. It surprised me, to be honest with you, not because you're not producing quality music, but just, look, I've been a lifelong man of extre- a fan of extreme music, and I just think extreme music is finding such a wonderfully um, dedicated audience in Australia at the moment. You know, I go to all of these gigs like Watain and Mayhem and the like, and they're just full, you know, they're sellouts. And I, as I say, being I'm 42, so having been a fan of the music that I mentioned and sounds like what you're crafting and bands like Portal, Portal and the like, it's it's just finding such a wonderfully dedicated audience at the moment that it really gives me hope for the future of music, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, that's a cool thing. I, I, I think in general also that, you know, while, while a lot of music is going more and more plastic in the future, like, you know, the mainstream things, yeah. I think there's a counter reaction to that as well at the same time. And it will be more in the future, meaning that the underground will will rise in, I think, many ways in, in the music as well. Hmm. Yeah. Look, I, I would say that you've crafted easily the most ambitiously disturbing release since Portal's Ion. And now that was came out in 2018 or so. So that's about two years or so. But that's still a hell of an accomplishment. So, look, I mentioned, you know, Mayhem and Watain and some bands, but I'll go even deeper than that. So I grew up dabbling with some very extreme stuff, such as Pungent Stench, Bethlehem, you've probably heard of Bethlehem. They're a pretty disturbing band. Yeah. And the very demented Gigi Allen. But, you know, you guys, you sound nothing like those bands uh, and artists, but what you do share is that you've crafted sounds that, look, they're genuinely different to anything that's out there at the moment. There's only you guys doing what you guys do um, in 2020. So just when you think you've heard it all, along comes, and I hope I pronounce your band name correctly here, but Aransi Pazuzu. How does that, is that the way you pronounce it? Exactly. Perfect. Okay. So, look, it's a fairly long opening statement there, but I really want to offer you a heartfelt congratulations on Miss Starin Kiensi. Did I pronounce that correctly? Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Look, it is an achievement, and I believe it's a truly unforgettable album. Before even when John sends through these things, I listened to it. Uh, well, I got this, I can't remember what single it was that. That came out it might have been Usi Technocratia uh, that that I got back in December or January, whenever you could get it. Um, I tend to get things fairly quickly because I, I do a lot of the nuclear blast promo stuff with John. Yeah. And uh, when I heard it, I was like, "Holy shit! This is man! I haven't heard anything quite like this." So when I was thinking of questions to ask you, I was actually stuck. <laughs> so I've got to ask the most obvious question, I suppose, when uh, in, in absence of anything profound. But what are you inspired by? Uh, I think like uh, in general, of course music, but all the other arts as well. Uh, mm. Like, uh, and, and I think like everything that's going on around us and, and also like, you know, maybe the biggest inspiration for me, like personally, is like kind of explore, exploration of, of, of your own psych and, and then, you know, all these existential uh, kind of, uh, let's say, crisis even. And, and you know, just the just absurd situation where we live in this kind of ball of uh, rock in, in space that, you know, mm. how we're all here and, and thinking about these things. Just, you know, everything is so surreal that, you know, I think it's an endless inspiration for the art uh, in general, like the the whole whole, whole this whole scenario of, of you know 
life and universe. It's, it's nuts. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. It's crazy. And, and uh, the more I dive into history, the more I realize we really are insane. Okay, and uh, history is written by the victors and written by the more powerful uh, entity, if you like, and most of it's bullshit, if you don't mind me saying. You know, like, for example, I've made this point a few times, but the pyramids that now some people, I can't remember the guy, I think it's uh, someone or another, Hancock, he's a British historian, he's claiming that they're up to something like 60,000 years old at the moment. So basically everything that you and I grew up with at school is bullshit. And to your point, you know, there's that... uh, there's that telescope there in Hawaii that allows you to, It's. Uh, I think it gives you, I'm, I'm not sure, I'll get the, the the terminology or the reason for its its location incorrect, but it's one of those places, Joe Rogan talks about it actually, where you realise that it, when you go to this particular telescope and you're standing on the mountain this telescope is on, you realise that we are just a ball of rock hurtling through space. We are completely alone in this incredibly dark void that is space and dark and antimatter and you you feel that that isolation and you feel yeah terry <laughs> pratchett, yeah terry pratchett this world books give like quite good interpretation of, of that i don't know if you check them out but no i will though yeah i will yeah uh, it's good stuff it's the absurdness of it all yeah it's uh it's very strange but i feel like your music is a soundtrack to that to what i just said I feel like, and I, I actually take a lot of comfort from your music, and I, I don't know whether you've had that feedback before. Um, I, I do like the music of um, Trepanering's Ritual and as well a lot. Uh, I caught up with Thomas when he came to Australia. He's a lovely fellow, by the way. I'd love to see you guys do some shows together, actually. But music like that, it's so it's so out there, and it's so unique, and it's so different compared to the you know the plastic culture of what we're so used to listening to that. When there are people out there, creative art, creatives like yourself out there, you actually feel like as though there are kindred souls that actually get what's going on, and not just in the world, but in the broader universe. So, is that is that would that match your broader philosophy as well when you're crafting music? Uh, I think like we don't know any better what's going on than anyone else, but we try to just you know um, explore those things that that for us feel like are, are, you know, part of the mystery and, and, you know, it, and, and then there's also, you know, in our music that it's not always pleasant, you know, all that mm. stuff, meaning that like, uh, the humankind and, you know, even the life itself, it's not really important in the, in the, you know, yeah, how, right. how the yeah. universe is, is, even if we want to think so it really is not and it universe doesn't care about you and and you know i think it's humbling to think about these things and and you know try to for us try to put that in our music as well and and i guess that's the black metal side of our you know philosophy in, in the music is is kind of those sorts of thoughts yeah okay and uh look the video to usi technocratia is an accomplishment as well look it's Look, it's the meeting point between Stanley Kubrick's The Shining and George Orwell's 1984, when I'm looking at it. So I, I hope that that resonates. And, and am I on point with that reference? And can you tell me about the concept behind the video? Uh, well, I have to give all the credit to Jeff Deans, who, who did the video. Like, we had been following his work. For example, he did a video for Portal. Uh, and... Uh, and uh, uh, we just, you know, asked if he would be interested, and and we were really surprised to hear that. Yeah, yeah, I wanna, I wanna do it. So we just, you know, gave him the loose theme of the song, and uh, said that do your thing, and uh, he did it. And and you know, I think he got the theme of the song perfectly, and even expanded it, like with his video, and mm-hmm. and. Uh, made a huge effort for for all of the things in it so all the credit for him and i think it worked out really well Hmm. it was interesting just before i watched your video um it wasn't too long ago now but uh there was an announcement that in china there was going to be something and i'll get the number wrong but it was either sixty thousand or six hundred thousand video cameras that have been installed across china of course because of their social 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 metric scores and and to watch your video then with that video camera theme and and how it basically is blanking people out 
and the like. It reminded me very much of China beyond the comparison uh, that I, I uh, offered with The Shining and also 1984 as well. So is there any political uh, reference in your music at all? Uh, something we have been trying to avoid like all the time, but I can like... It's not a political album, this one, but of course it reflects uh, uh, the reality around you. And, and, you know, I think it also has some, like, I'm not the lyricist, but we discuss quite a lot of, uh, about the themes uh, of, mm. of all the albums we do. But I think it like, it, it tells the story of human being as well in a way that how history has shown us, like where things can go if they go like uh, wrong somehow, or if 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 there's you know a charismatic leader or or religious leader or whatever leader, people want to probably follow him or her, and and you know people want to find something to belong into quite uh, strongly, and you know if that thing is something that can lead you know to what you just said, like, you know, using that kind of technology to control uh, society and, and, you know, all that. So this album is a dystopian nightmare vision of exactly that uh, nice. kind of this cultish uh, leader. Uh, that reminds me a bit of, you know, Tulsa Doom or something like that. So it's not really about any politician or something like that. Like that. It's much more powerful character that the album is about. But, uh, yeah, of course, uh, we draw things to art always ar from around us and from things happening and things we notice. So even if it's not a political album, it's, it's you know, it, it's it's a nightmare of, of future. Yeah, yeah, gotcha, yeah. Look, and, and the sounds across it too, you've captured everything brilliantly, by the way. So another congratulations on that one there. I can't imagine how difficult and how many tens of hours you collectively sat down together and just made sure that it sounded balanced and that's the word i'm going to use it sounds balanced because you've got the you've got the the, the metal and what's called metal and rock stuff but then there's the orchestral stuff as well and then there's electronic stuff in there so you've got these these three things that if you don't have a deft hand they can sound extremely disorganized and there's too many examples of that for me to to offer but you guys have nailed it here so was was it an album that came together relatively quickly or was it was it fairly labor intensive uh, it came together quite fast meaning that we had the studio done and the comp compositions done in a year, but we, with this band, we do things live and, and we can't, you know, just send files to each other and, and kind of yeah. go from there. We need to be all present at the rehearsal place. Uh, and that means that we have to schedule a lot of time for that, that everyone is at the same place at the same time in the rehearsal place and, and jam all the ideas and, and things like even if someone has like an uh, idea from home like a home demo it's gonna transfer into something else and we wanna want it to transfer into something else when we play it together and jam it together and that's one of the criteria i think for us that there's a some something new rising like when we when we try the idea and if if, if that doesn't happen if you don't like have some kind of factor acts there that that we don't ourselves know like what the hell is going on here then probably we're not going to use that part because the atmosphere needs to be kind of really strong and unique and you can't get that with just riffs so with us it's, it's always pretty old school the kind of approach that we need to jam the things together and even if we use new technology like you mentioned like electronic things and there's sampler and stuff like that going on on the album we need to jam with the sampler and not just add it later or something like that. Otherwise, it's going to yeah. be, like you mentioned, like an outsider. Like, yeah. It doesn't, yeah, we need to, you know, have that as a member of the band, sort of, when we play. So we try to be old school about that, but new school about, you know, incorporating um, kind of new things, new sounds into the music. Mm. Is it... Do, do you enjoy playing the music that you play or is it cathartic? You know what I mean? Like, is it something that you need to do because 
you need to do it or is it actually is it like a traditional rock and roll band where you look you know because i'm a musician too so i look over at everybody on stage and i'm playing like yeah we're having a good night you know that sort of thing is it like that for you guys as well yeah like we enjoy it but at least for me and i think for for everyone in the band it's kind of you have to do it at the same time like i think for all, all people who who you know still at their closer to their 40s uh still still do you know music it, it it has to come from from something else than just playing in a rock band or it has to be something that is like that you wouldn't function without doing uh, art yourself even if it's not this band you kind of have to do something uh and and if you wouldn't do that if you would stop it then you wouldn't be yourself in in some way so it's like part of your personality i think as well and and you know for us that's always come first because uh it's not like if we would want to just be a rock and roll band we would probably have started playing something else than this because we didn't think we would do any shows outside finland or release any albums mm -hmm. through any label or anything like that so it's always been like more about the exploration of, of, of the art itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you guys in Helsinki or are you outside of the city? Uh, one of us lives in Helsinki. Uh, I live in Tampere and two other uh, band members live in Tampere as well. And one lives in Seinäjoki. So we're a bit scattered, but uh, hmm. not too far, luckily. Yeah. Is, is the nature of uh, Finn society and Helsinki, Helsinki in particular because it is the major city is that changing in the same way Berlin is with all of the Syrian migrants and all of that sort of thing coming in? Uh, like Finland, Finland is it's only like five point something million people living in a country sizes the same size as Germany so like it's it's really you know <laughs> The, the, Helsinki is the only, let's say, bigger city, but even that mm. is not a big city if we compare it to Europe in general. Mm. Uh, you know, there's metro line in Helsinki that goes to the two directions, so that kind of tells <laughs> it. Uh, so I, I don't, I don't think there's like that much stuff that going on on here. But you know, it, it depends. Then when you travel, you know. To, from Helsinki to other places in Finland, it, it's pretty weird in a way that there's not a lot of people around just in general. Yeah, it's probably a bit like where I am here, actually. You know, Australia obviously fits, you know, yeah. Europe fits into Australia two or three times, maybe more, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, and outside of the major cities. The reason in Australia we have to live in the major cities is because life just isn't supported anywhere else. It's just too barren. You can't have what, you know, like Phoenix in the United States or Las Vegas that sprung up out of nowhere, you know, in deserts yeah. and stuff. It just, it's far too hospitable. But I think, um, I think when I was thinking which countries that you could come from before I realized you were from Finland or read that you guys were from Finland, I thought it'd either be Iceland, Finland or here in Australia. And that hints at that isolation, I think, because yeah. I think it's, it's only that connection genuine connection to being around nature that encourages the sounds that you produced here is that do you agree with yeah. that yeah uh like i'm not a huge nature person but i i do like think that the isolation of or or you know even it's even in the culture of, of finnish people like that we are not super talkative uh, always and 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 you know sometimes can just, you know, sit with your friends and not talk anything. And, and you know, mm. I think from, from stuff like that, sometimes the kind of art more like the art stuff kind of spews from that a bit when, when, you know, there's a bit of catharsis in that. And also the darkness that comes like, uh, the most of the year is pretty fucking dark here. Like, and, oh, yeah. the, and the, it's worst. It's like, darkness arrives at 3 p.m. and then it's going to be again dark until the next morning of let's say 11 or 10 or something like yeah. that. It's like like four hours of, of daylight <laughs> at its worst and, and it lasts for too long in my opinion but but you know on the other hand during those times you don't have much else to do but to call the rehearsal place and start. 
but it's always difficult to tell from the inside like what part is because of the surroundings and what part is something else yeah it's ridiculous here in australia the, being a musician the amount of times i've driven home at um like 3 30 and i can see this at this am and i can see the bloody sun on the horizon you know i can't see the sun yet but i can see it peeking over the horizon and that's by 4 30 it's up you know in summer here in queensland i'm in the subtropics here it's up and it doesn't go down until sort of 8 30 or something like that so you, you kind of would probably get the opposite issue where we get too much sunlight and we go a bit funny because of that <laughs> start drinking yeah, all we, the rest of it <laughs> we have the summer like that lasts for basically two months or three months in the south of finland we have a uh, daylight that doesn't go down at all like we have daylight 24 hours because oh, yeah. oh, as well God. but that's yeah. only for the summer and then everyone goes crazy during those days mm. mate i think you got another one coming through now haven't you another interview coming through in three minutes time is that right uh in i think 13 minutes. Oh, sweet. Okay. Are you okay if I ask a couple more questions? Sure thing. Yeah. Hey, uh, people, I host a podcast series, so if it's okay with you, I'll release this as part of that. Um, sure. And look, people listening may associate Pazuzu with the Exorcist, okay, outside of it being an ancient Sumerian uh, god or demon, depending on your perspective. Did you, did you have any apprehensions about using the demon name, demon as the band's namesake? Um. Uh... I kind of came pretty early on and, and at the time when we didn't think too much, you know, because we didn't, we just wanted to release maybe a few songs and all that stuff. So it's a bit silly name to <laughs> when I think about it, but there is a kind of meaning behind it, which is like, uh, like you mentioned, part of pop culture and, and, and also, you know, kind of ancient myths and, and all that. And Pazuzu to obviously being the kind of uh, black metal side of, of our atmosphere in, in our music. And then the orange, which is Oransi, uh, it's, it's the more psychic kind of uh, element to that. And orange has been said to be the first color in the Big Bang. So it kind of points to that as well. And if it would be just black patsutsu or something like that, it would be too, it wouldn't describe our music, I think, very well. Because I think like, I think of our music is something that is black and white film, but where there's like color swirls going on as well. Yeah. And I think if we think about Dark Throne, for me, that's black and white movie, which is great. <laughs> so, uh, we, we also have that other side. And I think the name describes the band quite well even though i think it's a bit silly <laughs> have you heard of uh, a, a chick called erica fravel in the united states i don't think so she's a void worshipper and she crafts these pazuzu necklaces and the like she's into some pretty weird shit i must say um you know she <laughs> i don't she periodically activates and deactivates her instagram account but she's on youtube and i guess i'm saying this for the benefit of people listening but I've reached out to her and I've tried to interview her before, actually, and she, she was sort of non-committal, which, I, you know, whatever. No dramas whatsoever, but she gets right into the Pazuzu stuff, but I think she takes it really seriously. And and I've dived into the Pazuzu mythos and the like as well, and it's, uh, what was the other, it wasn't the, of course, it was in the first Exorcist, but there was an Exorcist, was it the Exorcist, um, what do they call it when something come, is released years later, but it's actually telling the story of what the what the movie was like, prior to the original sorry i can't they did it with star wars I yeah prologue remember. prologue yeah <laughs> sorry I was, it's on the tip of my tongue but yeah and um like yeah and i thought wow okay it was it was one of those things because i do tarot card readings and the like as well myself and get into a lot of this stuff and uh i to be honest i thought it was very brave using it and and i think you've obviously if you're into that sort of stuff you've obviously if there is a demonic entity known as pazuzu i think he's clearly given you permission to do it because of the, the quality of the music that you've got there. So you kind of got a blessing from beyond, if you like. So I guess that dovetails on my, my next question, which is, do, do you personally have a spiritual philosophy? Uh, I'm an atheist, but uh, it doesn't mean like uh, that, that I wouldn't find, you know, uh, mystery and, and, you know, magical things in in our existence or or in our minds and and you know i don't think knowing something 
how it works scientifically or whatever it doesn't like take anything off from the like we talked in the beginning like of the whole weirdness of our existence and, and all that but yeah i i'm an atheist in in that sense mm, yeah fair enough yeah i was just listening to stephen hawking's uh i can't remember the name of the book now god i'm having a shocker um but it's his last one before he died i actually think it was released after he died but and it's funny you mentioned the Big Bang Theory because he's got that whole philosophy around the mul- the, the multiverse prior to the universe yeah. coming into existence through the Big Bang and the like. And, uh, yeah, it, it actually, I've got to say, listening to that is sort of, it's I'm li- it's a bit like listening to Jordan, you know, Jordan Peterson is. It's a bit like listening to Jordan Peterson. You have to keep on stopping it and rewinding it in order to understand what he's talking about because it, there's so much profound wisdom and information coming at you so quickly. But yeah, I, I think he, he talked about what happens when you die. And he, he I don't think he believes in a God and he believes, they, I don't even think he believes in an afterlife, but he's leaving it open to interpretation. Now, my, my thoughts on Stephen are, he's at the time outside of Einstein, he's probably the most intelligent person on the planet. So if he can't come to any logical or even illogical conclusion about what happens next, I'm probably going to listen to him. Not, not that I have much... I mean, I was raised a Catholic, so you sort of, it's part of you. It never leaves you. You, you know how it is. It never, it never leaves you. But uh, yeah, it's interesting, you know, so I, I often, I dive into just about everything, reading the Satanic Bible and, and the Bhagavad Gita and trying to take wisdom from everything, if you like, uh, just to try to make life, make sense of life. So, but uh, make, I'll make this my final question for you. You know, I think you're an extremely ambitious band and, and, and I've already said, I, I love what you guys are, are doing. So do you have any, any ambitions um, to be bigger in terms of, I mean, you already said you, you weren't uh, expecting to play outside of Finland, but here you are with, a, with a, a chart release in Australia. No doubt it's going to chart in Germany, uh, Sweden, Norway. I mean, really the world's your oyster at the moment. So what do you think the next steps are for the band after this release? Uh, we are in a good position now, like with, 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 being on 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 label that can you know spread the spread our music uh, to the whole globe, so we just concentrate on the music and try to steer that ship uh, to the next place and don't really care about anything else. Like mm. all of this stuff is like whatever shows and and you know charts and all that come. It's because of the music. I want to keep that naivety sure. like in that and also you know i believe it's it's true in in many ways like there's a lot of bands you know maybe like new bands that i i think are trying to climb the tree like wrong way in meaning that they have all sorts of instagrams and and youtubes before they even have songs, and they somehow think that you can just cheat people into thinking that you're a big band or something like that because you have all of these things. I think it's it's it should be about the music and if that it's not enough, then who cares? At least you like done that music thing yourself. So for us, it's always going to be about that and whatever we do next, it's always because of the music and of course we want to exhibit our art to as many people as possible, but. Uh, we we don't want to exhibit anything that doesn't you know feel ambitious and good to us. Doesn't make any sense. Well, no doubt once this bloody COVID nineteen stuff is lifted, mate, and we're we're only a couple of weeks away from getting out of the restrictions ourselves here. Thank God, the kids are back at school and all the rest of it. But I, I sincerely hope to see you guys down here sometime in, in the very near future. You know you've got a fan base down here, so. Look, congratulations on everything. It's it's a wonderful album, uh, if I can use that term. It truly is. It's it's really it's unforgettable what you've done there. So just congratulations to yourself and the rest of the band. And uh, yeah, long may you prosper and make music. Thank you very much. No worries, mate. All right, I'll let you head to the next one. <laughs> See you next time. Thanks, mate, for sure. Catch ya. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast series that syndicates for the A-List online, and my name's Andrew Mackay-Smith. That interview subject was Yoon Hiss from the Finnish outfit Aransi Pazazu. Thanks for listening.